Good morning. Happy Sunday, everyone. We thank God for another day. We thank God for blessing us with another opportunity to walk with him in victory and to declare the goodness of our God and declare him as creator and to pass on the good news that salvation, salvation has been offered to each and every creature free of charge, paid for by God himself. That's how much he loves us. Let's uh, go to God in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning so thankful. Thankful that you love us in such a special way. That you provide for all our needs, that you protect us. That you guide our lives. That you put opportunities in our life for us to know you more intimately, to grab on to you and trust you for our needs. You give us opportunities to learn of your goodness, your mercy, your grace. You give us an opportunity to learn to be like your son, Jesus. And by studying your word and learning how Jesus behaved on earth as he walked in agreement with you to do your will. We have a perfect example of how you want to relate to us. We thank you for your son, Father. We thank you for your son who is that perfect example. And I pray to Jesus Christ. It's a savior of all who hear this lesson. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. Okay, today's lesson is called Increasing Ministry and Stephen's Martyrdom. The gospel is the power of God for salvation. The gospel is the power of God for salvation. The lesson overview says, this lesson is about the increasing ministry of the early church in Jerusalem and the growing tension between the Jewish religious leaders in Jerusalem and the believers in Jesus as the Messiah. It was almost inevitable that some would be killed for their faith in Jesus. Already the apostles had been beaten and threatened with death. But the first Christian martyr was not an apostle, but a Christian layman named Stephen. After being chosen by the church as one of the first seven deacons, he conducted a powerful persuasive ministry of teaching and gospel. For this, Stephen's opponents were so infuriated they became a violent mob and stoned him to death. Now our golden, golden text is from the book of Acts chapter 6 and verse 7 and it says the word of God increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. Okay, section one. Serving a multiplying church. Acts chapter six, verses one through seven. Let me read. In those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called a multitude of the disciples unto them and said, 
it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. The saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicar, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. The word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Because the early church at Jerusalem had adopted the practice of sharing their provisions, the poor and elderly widows in their fellowship received a daily ration of food from the church. Acts chapter 2 verse 45. The Hellenistic Jewish Christians who spoke Greek and were heavily influenced by Greek culture complained that the Judean Jewish Christians, the Hebrews, were neglecting the Hellenistic widows in the daily distribution of food. The apostles responded quickly, calling out or calling on the church to select seven men from their midst to work in the daily distribution of food to the widows. Verses 2 and 3. By placing these seven men over the work of the daily distribution of food to the widows, the apostles kept themselves free to give themselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Verse 4. Hey, will you guys be quiet? I'm trying to do a Bible study in here. Excuse me, sorry about that. All right, to continue this um, commentary, section one, it says, the proposal made by the apostles was pleasing to the church, and seven men were cho chosen. Verse five, after the seven deacons were chosen by the church, they were brought to the apostles who laid hands on them and prayed for them, ordaining them to the ministry for which they had been chosen by the church. Verse 6. The ordination of the seven deacons freed the apostles to give their attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. Verse 4. The result was that the effect of the gospel increased and large numbers of people, including many of the Jewish priests, became believers in Jesus as the Messiah. It was wise of the apostles not to neglect the preaching and teaching of the gospel to become occupied with serving tables. Verse 2. The apostles gave themselves to their own divine calling, while the deacons also gave themselves to their divine calling. Okay, section two, powerful ministry and teaching opposed. Acts chapter six, verses eight through 15. Acts six and eight. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and Sistines and Alexandrians and of them of Sicilia and of Asia disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom 
and the spirit by which he spake. Then they subdued or suborned men. Then they suborned men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. We have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Commentary says, in addition to ministering to the material needs of the poor, Stephen was also used mightily of God in the performance of miracles and in highly persuasive teaching of the Gospels. Acts chapter 6, verse 5 and verse 8. The teaching of Stephen was so persuasive that various groups of Jewish scholars in Jerusalem disputed with him. Verse 9. It appears that each of these groups had their own synagogue in Jerusalem. While Christians usually think of a synagogue as a Jewish house of worship, and it is, his primary purpose has always been for the reading and explanation of scripture and for debating religious and civil issues. Now being unable to disprove Stephen's teaching, verse 10, his opponents plotted to destroy him. They paid unscrupulous men to give false testimony that, that Stephen had spoken blasphemous, blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Verse 11. First, these false accusations were spread among the people and then recited to the Jewish religious, religious leaders in Jerusalem. Then the false accusers and others who had joined them seized Stephen and brought him to the Sanhedrin, the council in Jerusalem, to be judged by his high by this highest court of the Jewish people. Verse twelve. Before the council, false witnesses charged Stephen with blasphemy against the temple and the law of Moses, verses 13 and 14. However, while Stephen was being subjugated, subjugated to the verbal abuse of these terrible lies against him, all who sat in the council saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Verse 15. The Holy Spirit in Stephen was manifested through his countenance. Okay, section 3. The first Christian martyr. Acts chapter 7, verses 1, verse 2, and verses 51 through 60. We'll start reading at Acts 7. Uh, verse 54, and it says, When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. And verse 58 say, They cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Verse 59 says, And they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. The commentary says the presiding judge of the council, the high priest, asked Stephen, if the testimony against him were true. Stephen's answer 
which begins in verse 2 and runs through verse 53, was a recital of Jewish history, beginning with Abraham and concluding with the coming of Jesus the Messiah and his death on the cross. Stephen's knowledge of the scriptures and the personal faith and conviction with which he spoke testified that the charges against him were false. At the conclusion of his answer to the council, Stephen sternly rebuked the council for resisting the Spirit of God and rejecting the truth about Jesus being the Messiah. He said their predecessors had persecuted and killed the prophets of the Lord, and now they had persecuted and killed God's Messiah. Finally, Stephen said those who were sitting to judge him by the law of Moses refused to live by that law. The council members were so infuriated by Stephen's rebuke, by his charge, they had betrayed and murdered the Messiah and did not obey the law of Moses that they gnashed their teeth with rage against him. Surrounded by this hateful mob, Stephen knew his death was near, but he found strength in looking to Jesus. Verse 55. The mob suddenly rushed towards Stephen, assaulted him, carried him outside the city wall, and began stoning him. Verse 57 and 58. Luke notes that those stoning Stephen laid their robes and outer garments at the feet of a young man named Saul, who would later become the Apostle Paul. While being stoned to death, Stephen prayed, Lord, receive my spirit, thus testifying to his enemies that Jesus is alive. Verse 59. And then finally, Stephen knelt and prayed that God would forgive those who were stoning him. After this, he died peacefully, becoming the first Christian martyr. Okay, we'll end with a call to discipleship. And it says, a Christian martyr is one who literally dies for his or her faith in Christ. For us to be living witnesses of Christ, it is necessary that we die daily to sin and selfishness and submit ourselves and our living to His Lordship. We do this by walking by the Spirit. In so doing, we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Galatians 5.16 We crucify the flesh with its passions and desires. These desires, if satisfied, will keep one from inheriting the kingdom of God. Instead of giving in to these unholy passions and desires, we seek to strengthen Christ-like habits and practices that will conform us into the image of Christ, including His passion for holiness. Amen. Amen. We need to stand for our beliefs. Um, and, and there's a possibility that that would include death. Um, we, we must declare the truth of Jesus Christ being the Son of God. And we need to declare it to the lost world so that some men like Saul was, can be converted, can, can be converted to faith in Christ. You have an opportunity to do God's will, to live and walk 
without sin and to declare who he is and his gift of salvation. That's our opportunity. God has given us that assignment to walk holy, righteously, with him as our Lord, obeying his word, being filled with his spirit, walking in truth and love for each other and for him. Thank you for your time this morning. I pray that you visit your church this morning, that you fellowship with other believers, that you pray with your family, that you declare God as Lord and Savior of your life and walk in holiness with him. Thank you and have a blessed day.